Parallel computing is a computation paradigm where execution of several processes is carried out simultaneously. You can see that in computer networks, graphics processing units, operating systems, and even human brain. Non-determinism, a concept that had great impact on the theory of computation, is kind of a theoretical version of this. I shall introduce you to the concept of non-determinism using finite automatons. Take a look at this diagram. Clearly, this machine violates the basic rules of DFA. The state Q0 has multiple transitions for the character 1 and the state Q1 does not have a transition for character 0. This machine is a valid non-deterministic finite automaton or an NFA, which we shall be discussing in depth in next few lectures. I'll give you a brief overview on how to execute this machine on a simple input string, say 110. For the character 1, the NFA seems to transition back to Q0 as well as Q1. You can think of this as a forking process where the NFA creates a copy of itself and follows all the possibilities in parallel. All right. Moving on to the next character, which is 1, the first machine is going to create another copy of itself. The second machine is going to Q2, which is marked as an accept state. You have to remember that the automaton has to read the entire input string before accepting the string. Then we have the last character of the string, which is a 0. We will run all these three machines on this character. The first machine transitions back to Q0 on the character 0. The second machine is in the state Q2, which does not have a transition for the character 0. So the second machine sort of dies. Same is the case with the third machine here. Q1 does not have transition for 0, so it dies as well. Now we are just left with this machine which is not in the accept state after reading the whole input string. Hence we can say that the given NFA rejects the given string 110. Let us guess the language of this NFA through visual inspection. It seems like any string that ends with 11 will be accepted by this NFA. So we shall run this NFA on string 0, 1, 1, 1. I will show you a better way of visualizing the states of NFA when run on an input string. Instead of creating multiple copies, uh, I would highlight the states in the main machine itself. I'll also draw this tree graph which shows the states in which the NFA will be after reading each character. Alright, when this NFA reads character 0, it will still be in Q0. When it reads 1, it will be in Q0 as well as Q1. When it reads another one, it will be in Q0, it will be in Q1, it will be in Q2 as well. When it reads another one, the same thing happens, Q0, Q1 and Q2. That's it. We have run the entire string on the NFA and as you can see, one of the highlighted states is an accepted state. So we can say that this NFA accepts the string 0, 1, 1, 1. Perfect. One of the special features of NFA is that it can have an empty string transition. Take a look at this example NFA. When the machine reaches the state Q1, it automatically reaches Q2 and both these states become active. Through visual inspection, you can see that this NFA seems to accept strings with either 101 as a substring or 11 as a substring. I'll demonstrate how to trace a given string on an NFA to check if it belongs to its language with this example. Clearly, 
this NFA accepts empty string epsilon. Let's see what happens if we feed this NFA the character A. See this epsilon transition? It connects the start state to Q3. Which is kind of cheating, right? Technically speaking, this NFA has two start states right now. Anyways, the character A traces back to Q1, which is an accept state. Hence, this NFA accepts A. How about BAA? -A? We trace it this way. So we go to Q2. Instead of using the transition on A here, I will use the transition right here and move closer towards the accept state. With another A, I reach the accept state. So BAA is in the language of this NFA. How about BABA? This is when I would take this transition and trace the path towards the accept state. You always check for the best path towards the accept state. And if the string is in the language of the NFA, you are bound to reach it. So all of these strings are accepted by this NFA. Now, how about character B? You have only one choice. So you go to Q2, which is not an accepting state. So this NFA rejects B. Same as the case with BB. It ends up in Q3, which is not an accept state. And finally, let's try to check if BA, BBA is accepted by this NFA. It reaches Q3. And as it does not have a transition for the character B, the machine sort of dies. When there are no states to go to in an NFA, we can say that it rejects the string. The epsilon transitions add a lot of convenience to NFAs. For example, to build a machine that accepts the union language of two NFAs, you can connect both of them using epsilon transitions. And there you go. You now have a machine that accepts the union language of the two NFAs. No need to create the tedious product automaton like you did for the DFAs. All right, the theoretical computer scientist in you might start getting a little uncomfortable as none of these concepts have been formally defined or proved to be true. That will be the focus of next few lectures.